Okay, so uh, recently I got into uh, 3D printing and uh, I tried to figure out for myself how to uh, get my custom models uh, from ZBrush down to um, online 3D printing services like Shapeways or iMaterialize. And uh, it turned out at the time there weren't really that many good uh, video tutorials on the subject, so uh, I figured I would just uh, learn it myself and uh, if, I got, if I found a good workflow I would make a tutorial myself. So here it goes. So uh, this is the first model I made um, in ZBrush and um, sent to uh, Shapeways, who printed my model in um, well, ultra detail plastic. So um, yeah, there are many different uh, materials you can use. Uh, you can use uh, the cheaper, high flexible, uh, the flexible, strong plastics, and you can also print in the more expensive materials like uh, um, well, you got I think you got stainless steel, you got silver, gold. Ceramics, uh, uh, sand, colored sandstone, um, so many different uh, different stuff, different uh, materials. So yeah, it's a very interesting technology to get into right now because there are lots of things changing. I think uh, this year also uh, one of the major patents is going to expire. So all the the industrial and uh, commercial printers are going to suddenly become really cheap and affordable. So yeah, it's a good uh, good time to get into it. So this is the uh, the final uh, model I sent into Shapeways, and uh, if I show uh, inside, you can see it's a nice hollow mesh with uh, an outer shell and uh, some extra reinforcements on the inside. And this was actually my second version I sent in because uh, the first ones turned out to be a bit too uh, too fragile, and uh, apparently once they took them out of, out of the machines, they broke. And uh, well, luckily I didn't have to pay for those, and uh, I just uh, sent in a second version with a a thicker shell and the reinforcements and it was okay. So uh, you can learn from my mistakes. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to my original version which is a uh, much higher resolution and uh, nearly 8 million uh, points. I'm going to uh, create a backup of that because I'm going to need it later on to uh, to reproject my uh, higher details onto the blurred version which I'm going to be making using uh, Dynamesh which is my favorite uh, technique for this. So uh, on the geometry, go to go to Dynamesh and uh, leave the blur setting of two, which helps reduce artifacts later on. On the resolution, I'm going to go to going to choose 800. It's a nice uh, balance. Click on Dynamesh. Let it calculate for a bit. There you go. So under the brush palette, I'm going to choose the uh, inserted cylinder brush. And while you uh, press that, you're going to uh, you're going to want to hold down the Alt key on the keyboard, and that'll uh, helps that'll subtract uh, the uh, cylinder from the original mesh. So just uh, press, click, drag, and you might want to okay, never mind, don't uh, press Shift. Just click and drag, and uh, get a nice uh, shape out. And uh, first, when you let go, you won't see it until you move your mesh around, and you'll see that it's only one side uh, one side showing up. So uh, to Fix that. You can go to Display Properties, click on Double Sided, and uh, your cylinder will show up. So you can also uh, hang on, quickly remove that. You can scale it down, obviously, and you can move it around a bit. Just choose your position, position of your hole. And uh, also, what's really important is that this uh, that it intersects your the mesh properly. So uh, you can also make it a bit bigger. And what you want is I just uh, wanted to penetrate your shell far enough, but not go all the way through, obviously, and uh, say this is probably good enough. Uh, leave it at that. Then you can go back to geometry, uh, Dynamesh, and here's the thickness settings. So you're going to uh, first um, press Control, click and drag next to uh, the model to unselect uh, the model. Then just click on Create Shell, and it'll create a shell with uh, the thickness of 10. There you go. That's looking good. Uh, it's maybe a bit too thin, but for this uh, tutorial, it'll be good enough. It's all about the process anyway, so there you go. I'll quickly explain how to do uh, the uh, reinforcements as well. So also with Dynamesh, just uh, click and drag. This time you don't have to do uh, subtraction, so just uh, click and drag. Pull it out, get a nice uh, big shape. There you go, that's good. And check out this side, how thick it is. Um, yeah, it's actually quite good. Um, 
Yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. That's actually perfect. So then to uh, do some quick last minute changes, I'm going to select the move tool, the move rush, sorry. Resize, uh, resize a bit. I'm going to uh, turn on symmetry, press an X and uh, pull this out a bit. Sorry. There you go, that's good. And what you want is it just to be right below the surface, so you can't, you shouldn't be able to see it, but it should be right uh, beneath the surface. And I'll explain that in just a minute. So there you go, that's perfect. So uh, I'll, I'll let you see the inside, so uh, I'll explain that a bit. I want to undo symmetry first, and then uh, select. And now you can see on the inside, um, the new reinforce, the reinforcements uh, go inside the, the shell. And what you want is it to become one part, a part of the shell, so it'll become a, so just blend together nicely. So I'm gonna unhide, remove my mask, and then just once more make a, do the same uh, motion. So just control, click, and drag, and that'll force Dynamesh to recalculate the mesh. So let's see what that does. So if you uh, look inside again, you'll see that reinforcements have just become part of the shell. So it's nicely the line in the, in the corner. Is all blurred nicely together with the rest of the mesh, which is nice. And also very important is that your that your uh, reinforcement doesn't block the entire path. It, it needs to leave some room for the filament to escape, which will go uh, up and out of this hole. And uh, yeah, so that's what you want. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do now is uh, is uh, reproject my details back before I start to uh, tweak the the rest of the mesh. So I'm going to unhide this uh, this model by just pressing the, uh, the eye icon. Then select my uh, Dynamesh model again, and go to Project and click on Project Hull. There you go. Gonna hide this for now, and uh, voila, this is the new mesh. So this is the previous version, and this is the new one. So you can see uh, the details have come back nicely. That's perfect. Okay, so before you can upload the shape base, there's one more step you have to uh, Keep in mind, the the model row right now is really heavy. This will uh, result in uh, an OBJ size file size of uh, at least uh, at least 70 megabytes, and I think there's a file size limit of maybe 20 megabytes or 30 something like that. So to do that, you can uh, to fix that. You can use the Decimation Master, which is a uh, well. If you don't know this, this plugin, there are lots of good tutorials on YouTube. I suggest you check it out. And uh, I'm just going to go through this really fast. Uh, click on Pre-process Current. That'll recalculate that'll re calculate the density of the mesh of the, the selected uh, subtool. And basically, what this is doing is looking for ways to optimize your mesh. So it'll uh, try and preserve the details and uh, at the same time reduce the geometry. So there you go. And quickly, I'm going to leave the uh, percentage of decimation on 20. Click on decimate current. And there you go. That's it. So you can see it's uh, severely reduced uh, the geometry. And uh, okay, so um, quickly go to um, the three D print exporter, which is also a plugin uh, you can find on uh, pixellogic.com. I'm going to select uh, millimeters and uh, choose selected because I want the, the selected subtool to be uh, to be used. And click on update update size ratios. And there you have it. So if you now click on uh, export on OBJ, it'll export uh, an OBJ file. And just uh, choose where you want that, and just uh, do this a couple of times, and uh, you can play with lots of things like uh, different uh, wall thicknesses. You can uh, play the density of your mesh. You can play different uh, sizes of your mo of your model, and it'll all influence your uh, the uh, the final the product price. And uh, yeah, so I just suggest you try that out. I hope this was useful and uh, helps you with your three D printing uh, ambitions. Good luck.